here we see a tool from the plastic injection molding process. Unfortunately, you cannot see what is happening inside, which is very important for the analysis. Like for example the movement of the sliders or ejectors or the noise inside the tool. But we need these noises for the analysis. And we record all these noises with our Quad Structure Bone Sound Sensor. The acoustic sensor is mounted outside the mold and it records the movement noises that you see right now. Here we see a 2 second amplitude time signal from an opening plastic injection tool. So this gives us too little information to even identify individual tool elements. And Quas then subjects this data to spectral analysis to extract information in the frequency tracks. Yes, by applying this Fourier transformation we get a 3D landscape in which we can more clearly visualize variations and frequency differences. In this 2 second 2 sequence we now see about 25 million data points and if we look at just a 30 millisecond section as seen here in the video it is still 400,000 data points. If we now look at the complete tool sequence, these two seconds in the 3D landscape, we see different signal sequences of signal gaps and signal pulses. In addition, we also see many interfering noises that run as bands through our frequency axis. The aim is to find and monitor individual signal sequences over the entire course of the tool cycle. For reliable recognition of these sequences, it is therefore necessary to filter out these interfering noises from the process. And for this filtering, we use a frequency mask that is cut out on an area where no tool movement takes place. Once this frequency mask has been defined, it is subtracted from the entire process, as shown here. This transformed data then forms the basis for our analysis. Yes, as you can see, we will then discuss this issue again as a team. And in doing so, different questions will be clarified. For example, how can the different signal types and signal sequences be separated and processed in our software? In case of plastic ejection molding, we proceeded in such a way that we first looked at the energy cores of the signal sequences in order to develop an analysis method. This method should detect individual processing steps of a single ejector over thousands of components. In this way we can then monitor the ejector over several processes. For this purpose we have programmed algorithms to determine the start and end times of such sequences and these are then displayed on the time axis. First, the standard analysis methods are applied to the pre-filtered data to get an overview of the signal basis and to work out the special features of the signal structure. For this purpose, we use our analysis algorithms which are available in small modules that we can couple together graphically and very variably. We call these modules operators. With the help of these operators, it is possible to program own analysis quickly and easily. However, if it comes to the point that you cannot get anywhere with the ready-made operators, we have created a JavaScript that can be quickly used and reprogrammed to analyze the data more precisely. The databases for our analysis is a slope analysis, which we programmed in the JavaScript operator. And this is what we see here on the picture. And we have a pink graph here. The pink graph is our energy curve. We use the energy curve as a basis for the determination of our slope function. 
So in yellow we see the corresponding slope graph and with the help of the slope graph we look for the start and stop sequences, which we then write out in the JavaScript operator on the left. So in the end we let our analysis be displayed here again. These white boxes that you can see there are the first results that we achieved with our first programming of the algorithm and these are now shown here. What previous knowledge did you both have in the field of plastic injection molding? A little bit in the field of plastic injection molding. You knew the process, you did measurements and so on, but apart from that, yes, not really much. And what previous knowledge did you have in programming? None at all. So these first results from our sequences then served as a basis for our discussion in the team to see what else we have to change in the algorithm to find exactly what we want to see. So you could say that this method of data-driven adaptive programming gradually brings us closer to our ability to analyze. So that we can then program these changes back into the algorithm as a team and write them out again using the JavaScript operator, the print function. This programmed algorithm has now fully automatically defined 97 different sequences on the time axis based on the data of the slope calculation. These are then displayed in the 3D FFT landscape as white boxes. Each box contains a single result with a defined timestamp. The different sequences can mean pause times or tool movements. Now you can determine a trend for each individual sequence over thousands of processes. For this purpose, the results of the individual sequences are plotted over thousands of process cycles in a diagram. This produces 97 graphs on the vertical axis and there is a line for each sequence. On the horizontal axis we have about 10,000 processes. Here jumps and changes in the process flow become clearly visible. This gives us the possibility, the possibility to listen directly into the inside of the machine and the tool during the machining process and to monitor the process. The more information we have about the process or the tool sequence, such as cycle times or temperatures, the more precisely we can define the sequences in the histogram. Basically, it is of course helpful to have a lot of information, but it is not absolutely necessary. The most important thing is to have a start and an end time. Also, it is always very helpful to have an additional control signal to provide information to the machine or to the operator. In our case, that would be, for example, a signal like the tool needs to be optimized or needs to be included in a permature maintenance. Aim for the future is to use these analysis to make prognosis for the tool. So how long the tool will last and when it will need maintenance. But we can already say that our analysis, which we have programmed in the last few weeks, give us a very good overview and that we can also react live in the process to differences and changes in the tool during plastic injection molding. Jenny, from your point of view, is there any other system that can be used to get this information from inside the machine? I would not know of any now, because with plastic injection molding there is simply no way of looking into the process or into the tool during the process. So somehow you need a way to make this hidden information visible and I do not know of any other systems. Can the machine tell us what exactly happens in at what point in time so that we can keep it apart? Only theoretically the machine can do this. There are machine protocols. If they were made available to us we could compare these protocols directly with the time scaling of the individual sequences, individual graphs, which we see here in the chart. And if we were to put that next to it, we could assign it to an injector, a slider or whatever you would like to see and then identify the defect component directly. Exactly. So what we see here now is probably the first time such charts are published at all. We recently put it on the website. 
The team has developed it in the workshops. We had imagined it for a long time, but we did neither have the time nor the energy or the construction kit to finish it that way. We had been working on the injection molding for years, but unfortunately we could never make it to this point. Now we have done and finished it. And this probably gives all users the opportunity to see the mechanical movements of the mechanical parts for the first time. This opens up a wide range of valuable opportunities. And we are now going into live measurements on the machines, right? Exactly right. How helpful do you think is the script operator's ability to access the measurement data in a targeted manner? Yes, all right. The JavaScript operator offers you an infinite possibility to access data in any way. The question is, whoever sits in front of it, what does he ask the system? Because this is the information he will accordingly get. So I mean, it is always a matter of asking the right question. Does that mean that you think you only need the distinguish feature and then you are on your way? Here in this case, we even show these features visually already. And at the end of the day, all that is needed here is a limit value for the various sequences. A sequence represents, for example, a special ejector of the tool. That you say, we have a creation tolerance range for this ejector that I define. And if this is exceeded, I react with the machine signal and stop the machine or I inform the maintenance personnel, so that I can avoid damage to the producing machine. Now we both done some processes, and this is particularly there before, um, on special data. Uh, we have celebrated, we have curves depending on the data. Um, how do you see that in relation to users and customers? Was it fun? Could that also be a way for the customers to program something especially for him? Well, I think that programming a fine customers could have a lot of fun with that not just universities. I would say that if someone really wants to get to grips with their process and with the data, then they can definitely learn a lot more from their process than they did before with our previous system. So what I just wanted to add is that here we have done this fully automated sequencing for the first time. Sequencing means that we recognize different signals in one process and in fact very many. So humans are not able to detect all these 97 or 150 signals and then to recognize over tens of thousands of processes what are the important ones. But this works quite well with statistical methods. So this is actually something that computers are ideally suited for. So that is what we just added here. Up to now we have only evaluated structure borne sound because that was in our data. But we have already discussed that we of course also include information such as temperature, pressure, cooling or something like that. And that we let these flow together just like in joining.